Hello and welcome back to the channel. I still have Joe Wayneman with me. I've pointed the right way that time. Fantastic. <laughs> um, and we're here to just talk a little bit about Leeds United, what's happened in the season so far, what we're thinking about the Championship compared to the Premier League, and ultimately what's to come towards the end of the season. So I'm going to start off with uh, the Championship in general. I think we all thought that it was a big switch from the Premier League. We expected it to not quite be the same. What have you thought of the transition so far? Uh, I think the league's poor, if I'm honest, Joe. Um, I'm actually shocked. I think, obviously, we spent so long outside the Premier League that it became the norm. And then yeah. you make the step up to the Premier League and you realise, wow, yeah, the the, the, the death in quality is, is mental. Um, to then drop back down, and naturally, a lot of Leeds fans um, went into, oh, we know the Championship's tough and all this sort of stuff. But actually, you know, now 11 games in, it ain't. Uh, it's, I don't not, think it's not that all. bad. Yeah. At I, all. I think I think what happened was we got promoted and we were far better than the average champion si yeah. championship yeah. side that gets promoted is. So we thought Premier League's not that bad. There's the top mm. six that you're just not going to beat. And then everyone else is sort of our level. And mm. then we regressed to where the average promoted side is. Yeah. And now we're looking at it again in a fairly good position and we're like, oh, this championship is dreadful to be honest yeah i even look at the three teams that got promoted and and, and think we beat chef united we beat luton and burnley flip of a coin um just because of the style they play so yeah um i think we're a bit unfortunate that that we went we're in the division last season because there was like nine teams in it towards the end whereas if we're in the yeah. premier league this season with this squad we don't go down because they're no, the, we're, the we're teams fine, that, yeah the teams that have gone up are poor and um yeah, all the suspected decent teams that we play, even like Birmingham, who were sixth, I think, they beat us 1 0, but the team that we had was terrible. If we play that game again, you know, we had Shaq at right wing, we had players dotted out everywhere. I just think, um, you know, there's a lot being made about the gap. Had we have had this squad in place for the start of the season and not had to deal with August, the tumultuous month that it was, we'd also be there with. Uh, Leicester and Ipswich for me so uh, I also think like when we went up previously the league was really strong you had Brentford you had Norwich you had Sheffield United you had us you had a lot of top quality teams with top quality managers now it's not it's not like that I think I think we'll go up. I, I don't want to jump ahead but we'll be all right <laughs> yeah um I've just had a quick look at the league table now and even the Birmingham match, if we've got one of Nonto and Sinistera not on strike, we probably get something more out of that. And we are a single extra point away from being in third place. And then people feel completely different because then yeah. we're the team that's chasing Ipswich and Leicester. Yeah. I mean, out of Ipswich and Leicester, we've played one of those sides and we beat them fairly comfortably before we let off the gas towards the end of that match. It's it's a weird one, this league, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I think um, we weren't great defensively in that game either. There was a few errors. So, And I think the thing is with Ipswich, they can't continue to score three and four goals a game. It's just yeah. not sustainable. <laughs> not sustainable. Not um, sustainable. But it, <laughs> I know. But it's not, though, is it? You know, They can't yeah. allow teams to score two every game and expect to win them. Eventually, they will come unstuck. I don't think Leicester might run away with it. But listen, they've got to play us yet. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And even then, we don't need... It's not like a, what happened with Wrexham that one season issue. It's a two teams go up automatically yeah, and then there's a third exactly. through the playoffs. We don't need to beat Leicester necessarily. Yeah. We just need to be with yeah. them. Yeah. So um, in terms of the league so far, I've seen a lot of promising signs from a lot of players. One of the biggest promising signs took me by surprise a little bit with Jorginho Ruter because last season he didn't even get a game on Sam Alano. So I thought... Mm have we done an auto and bought someone that just is not suitable for the side? But he's sort of ripped it apart now. So what are your thoughts so far on the more promising bits of the season? Yeah, he's amazing, isn't he? I think um, he's created the most big chances uh, out of anyone in the Euro uh, in England's top five leagues. The closest to him is Mo Salah, which is, uh, which is, which is It's not that bad, is it? <laughs> no, it's not bad at all, mate. So, um, yeah, I love him. I think Piro knows where the back of the net is. Sam Byron, what a signing. Joe Rodon, with still Jed Spence to come back. Pascal Strauk, I love. I always have. Um, uh, Ampadu, Gray, like there is so many. Daniel Farker as well, right at the top of it. Yeah, is, yeah what a manager. And 
I do believe that when, not if, when we do get promoted, he will do better in the Premier League with better backing, and the 49ers are going to give him that for sure. Yeah, because part of the issue with his Norwich sides weren't that he wasn't able to get them playing, because again, no. Pookie scored an insane amount of goals. He was yeah. a fantastic bargain in Fantasy League every single time he was there, for a good reason as well. Um, but it's the fact that he didn't have the players to do it with and the players that he did have that were quite good didn't have the backing around them. And I feel like the 49ers are both from a sporting perspective with the fact that they do genuinely seem interested and you've got the likes of Larry Nance, who's like, I really want this team to do well. Mm. In addition to the investment side of things, means that you know they're not just going to lift off the accelerator. Yeah. No, no, I agree. That's... uh... That's the point, isn't it? I think Norwich, when they went up, they spent five million first time, and then the second time they spent thirty odd. But that was only because they sold Buendia. So, you know, um, yeah, I think with with money and the style that he likes to play, I think we'll I think we'll do all. Right. And he'll have learned from his two stints in the Premier League and a stint in the Bundesliga. You know, you're always learning. Um, even outside of football, you learn something new every day, as do I. You know, so, um, yeah, I think he'll be better suited next time around for sure. Yeah. Um, there's another player that I've just noted and I've not got a banner ready for him because it just came to my head now but and I don't know if you'll agree with this metaphor but I feel like Elon Melier is the equivalent of Patrick Bamford but in net where he needs confidence he needs momentum but once he's going he's quite good yeah. and I know that's yeah. sort of a stretch metaphor but do you sort of get that? Yeah and I, and I think the thing is with Melier people are still hung up on last season so if he does the slightest error, like we've seen with the punch uh, in the lead up to Bristol City's goal, he's getting hammered for it. But people forget that in the other preceding 10 games, he's punched every time and has sent it miles yeah. clear. So I think we need to try and shake off this thing of Melier being a bad goalkeeper because he's not and he never was. He was 21. He's got the most clean sheets for a player at that age, beating Joe Hart, who, by the way, was in Manchester City, not Leeds United. Um and then he's had a bad season due to a poor, porous defence. Like you can't, you can't expect to save them all, can you? Otherwise, he won't be at Leeds United. He'd be yeah. at the top of the division. So, yeah, he's a top keeper, and I still think he'll go very far in the game. And we're lucky to have him. If I'm being honest, I do, I do believe that. Yeah, he's the sort of player that if we didn't get him from, was it Lorient that we got him from, yeah, or somewhere yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, he's the sort of player that if we didn't get him from Lorient, then he would have gone to like a Villa or yeah. something for 20 million the season afterwards. Yeah. Uh, aside from the promising signs, I was just wondering if you've got any worries about what's still to come. Is there anything in terms of weaknesses or troubles that you've noticed in this lead side that really need to be dealt with if we want to make sure that we're getting towards our goals um, at the end of the year? See, the early season was we need a left back, we need a 10. As the season has gone on, I still would like us to address them positions, but if we didn't get a left back, I think it's that bad because Sam Byram's been phenomenal. But obviously there's question marks over his fitness, so you get a left back. Yeah. But if we didn't, and they're, you know, even with the 10, Gio Rutter looks unbelievable there when he plays there. Um, now, and, and weirdly, I, I don't think we play with the 10 at the moment either. I think we play with sort of two nines that take it in turns to drop in yeah. a little bit deeper, yeah, if that exactly. makes sense. Because yeah, yeah. You, you see Rutter in the right-back position making a challenge mm. and then playing a ball up to Archie Gray. And it's like, yeah. this is weirdly fluid. I quite like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's all over the shop. You're right. But like I look at the uh, Jaden Anthony goal against Watford and just see him sort of like playing a little bit deeper and being able to put that ball through. and um, But yeah, we probably do... That's the only thing I can see going wrong is maybe not addressing the squad in the areas that we need to, and it could because we, maybe under this uh, organization it'll be different. But knowing our look, if we didn't get a left back, Byron then would break down. <laughs> do you know what yeah. I mean? On February the first, and then we'd be like, "Oh my god!" So even if you go out and get a loan or sort of squad option, it still needs a player there, you know. But then again, in in a way, we've sort of got three options over there, arguably more as well, because. You don't necessarily need to consider Shackleton as a right back or a midfielder. He's sort of Stuart Dallasy in that he can do both yeah. and he can do central midfield. Plus, we've got Dallas potentially coming yeah, back. Plus, yeah. Furpo is yet to come back. And as much as a lot of people don't like Junior Furpo, I've always thought that he's 
his attacking side is quite good, and now he's got yeah. more of a defensive structure behind him that sort of makes sense. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't rate him, but I hear yeah, he's better going forward. Yeah, for sure. I've, I've, <laughs> I've liked him when he's played. I think the reason that a lot of people don't rate him is that he doesn't play <laughs> because his knees are made of crisps. Yeah. But no, it, it, does he, fine. does he, does he want to get fit? Would be my question, and I'm not. Listen, it's almost like I'm questioning someone's character, but but well, I guess I am. But there are some players that will run through brick walls, um, and others that maybe like being on the treatment table. And this are facts. Yeah. Like this is stuff that does happen. Maybe it's a mental thing, a mental block that he's worried that he'll always break down and stuff. And we've seen it with Bamford potentially because. Bamford now at the minute, and it, it was the same before. Whenever he's got competition, can get through games no bother. When he's the only guy, he, he falls over nearly every game and we're all worried. So, I don't know, maybe it's a mental issue as well, like subconsciously, I don't know. I think at the same time, though, with the Bamford thing, the season that he really, really shone, which was the first one back in the Premier League, he didn't hugely have competition for the nine because it was Rodrigo that he was up against and Rodrigo was playing as the ten, which really sort of mirrors the Piro versus Rutter thing that we're dealing with at the minute. But... I sort of see what you mean on the Furpo thing. Maybe it's a... Because I've seen people say that he just doesn't want to play in the championship, but if yeah, he doesn't want to that. get if he doesn't want to get fit, then he's not going to get a move to somewhere that isn't the championship. So Yeah. I don't agree with the sentiment that he doesn't want to play in the championship. I do think there's question yeah. marks over whether he's... Whether he's got that years. same drive, if you can. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Okay. So do you have any thoughts for the season ahead? Not necessarily whether or not we go up, but... Are there any sort of championship sides that you're looking at in a little bit of fear, even outside the championship? Who do you reckon is coming down? Who do you reckon from the championship is going up? That sort of thing. I think it's going to be a three-way tussle um, for, for for the top two, with the two that are up there and us. Um, I don't think I know as much as of us would like Bournemouth and Everton to drop down. I don't see that happening. I just think the three pro promoted teams are just poor. Maybe Burnley might be in with a sniff, but even still, um, I think company's going to have to maybe change his style. Um, some managers stick with it, and it ends up in the downfall. You know, you could argue that might be why Bielsa got sacked. I don't agree, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so not not really. I, I genuinely think the division, and I've said it before, and I don't mean it disrespectfully, but it's rubbish. So I, yeah. to be honest, Joe, can't wait to get out of it, mate, and get back to the Premier League, to be honest. It's it's one of those leagues where you know that sometimes you're not going to win the match, but yeah. you don't necessarily deserve to lose the match, if that makes sense. There's no, yeah, yeah. There's been no match this season where I've gone... We were dreadful there, except for the yeah. Birmingham one, and that's because half of our attackers were on strike. Mm. But even then, that was a bloody penalty in the last kick of the game. Could have got yeah. a point, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, just sort of second last thing. Do you think we go up? Yes, I do. Um, I don't think we'll win the league, and I'm not even bothered about winning the league. We had that, you know, we did that under Bielsa. Um, I think we go up in second. Um, I do. Um, yeah, I, I'm totally yeah. fine with it, honestly. Um, I think we'll win five, six games on the spin at times and we'll be in such a good position. I genuinely believe that fact. I think we come back from the international break, we beat Norwich. There's, I think we're going to be fine, Joe. It's just a case of whether or not we can catch, reel them in. I don't see Leicester dropping. Of course, they'll lose the odd game, um, but I don't think they'll drop enough for us to be able to catch them. However, Ipswich, that's where... That's where we have to be aiming for. I think it's nine points. Yeah. It's three games. It's a lot. Uh, so, For some reason, I closed my championship table a moment ago, which was really helpful. <laughs> uh, let's have a quick look if it'll load. Come on. It's fine. Yeah, I, off, off the top of my head, they're on 28. We're on 19. But now yeah, it I think loads. it's nine points. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're on 19. They're on 28. But yeah. there's an argument that we should probably be on more than 19 anyway. So it's fine. Yeah. We, we've got the moral promotion. <laughs> um, so just before we finish I'm just going to see if you can do some quick fire predictions, I am going to hold you to account on these whenever I can so in one sentence for each of these, your three promoted sides Leicester Leeds, Sunderland three relegated sides from the Premier League 
Bol- no, Burnley, Sheffield United, and Luton. All of the promoted ones as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Leeds United's Golden Boot, even though, of course, we don't care about Golden Boots anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Joel Pirro. Okay. And your player of the season? Uh, it, it will be Gio Rutter, but I think it probably should go to Amperu, but it will be Gio Rutter. Okay. Uh, so thanks for coming, Joe. It's massively appreciated every single time that we're able to have a chat just because, A, it's good to have someone to talk leads with that doesn't immediately hate me for doing it, <laughs> and uh, B, because it's always good to have an hour. Cheers, mate. Okay, so if you have enjoyed watching the video, comment below your thoughts, especially on those predictions. Uh, like the video and subscribe. I'll see you later.